Welcome back, guys. Today I've got a special guest, my buddy Darren Webb. Uh, Darren, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. And okay. Uh, my name is Darren Webb. I'm also known as the Web Slinger. Uh, goes along with the last name. It's been a nickname for mine since I was a little kid, so I stuck with it playing disc golf. I've been playing disc golf since about 2017. I really got hooked into it. Started playing 2019, probably competitively in tournaments and stuff like that. Um, the greatest thing I've done so far in my career is winning the the points championship for the Eco Tour 2020. So that was something special for me there. But I've uh, recently got into uh, designing some courses. Uh, I've designed now uh, two actual courses that are in play right now. I've designed the Founders Park. It was a design designed back in 2018, and then just this, earlier this year, I, I opened up the uh, nine hole course at Brunswick Community College down in Bolivia. Right now, I'm working with Southeastern Community College on uh, hopefully an 18 course. We haven't decided yet um, on that. And then there's another project here in, in Brunswick County that I really can't really say where it's at yet, but it's going to be really it's going to be really cool if I can get it if we if we can work everything out. So, all right. So he's got some exciting projects in the works. Now the Leland, the inaugural Leland Open in 2019 was the very first tournament I played after okay. like two or three months of playing. What went into planning that and then every Leland Open since then, okay. like how far in advance do you actually prep and plan? Uh, it varies. It varies a lot on time frame and when I start working on it. Uh, the last couple years, uh, just with the COVID and, and everything and all that mess, uh, it's been a little tough getting things going and uh, but since it's kind of opened up now the town has um, was really involved with that they really wanted everything to be safe and all that for all the players the town really wanted to have a tournament that they were in partnership with and then the town came to me and said hey now we have a course in town that you've put out we would like to have maybe a club that we can have under as our name now it's not the town's club it's it's our it's a Leland club. It's one me and uh, Darren Presley and uh, Jason Weir kind of all started up together. So we partnered together with them to have the Leland Open. Um, sometimes I start six, seven, eight months out, uh, just trying okay. to get um, trying to get sponsors. And I I kind of like to get some sponsors that aren't disc golf related. Mm -hmm. I do have some like K Fear Games has always been one. You know. Uh, Innova has always helped us out, but I kind of like to get local businesses like Piggly Wiggly yeah. or Bojangles or uh, local churches or something like that, you know. So that's been kind of one of the things that's been, um, you know, that I've been, I work on a lot. And then just a matter of just designing the course. And, and I like to do, I like to go above and beyond with, um, it's the little things. When I say the little things make it a big tournament. Last year, Instead of taking all the money that came in through sponsors and all that and putting it into signage and this, that, and the other, I decided to take it and put it in the payout. Last year's payout was probably, you know, an, an AM player, you know, winning an AM division, taking home $180 is unheard of usually. Oh, wow. And so... Um, yeah, I wasn't anywhere close to that, so I never <laughs> heard about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> so we put, we put a lot of that money last year back into the players. Uh, and we always get positive feedback, not just because of that, but you know what we do. We try to do it the best we can. Uh, just you know, instead of you know using the little flags for a little, in a plastic bag for a CTP, mm -hmm. I've got industrial grade steel that's you know got pencil holders and everything. So we kind of take some of the money that we get from our sponsors and we put it back into little things like that to make the uh, the uh, tournament great. Now, for anyone at home that's never played Founders Park, it has nine permanent holes, mm -hmm. but for the Leland Open, there's also nine urban holes. So when you go into designing and planning these urban holes, like, what's your thought process? Like, what do you look for? So first thing I do is get permission. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can, what space can I use? Uh, am I allowed to use this? Because, you know, here it's, it's the government complex, the town's complex, and they've got a lot of vehicles, they've got a lot of things in the way of where I would like to put a hole. Um, so I have to coordinate with that and make sure I'm allowed to use that space, first of all. Uh, after that, 
I usually take my bag and I'll just go out and I'll look and I'm like, and, and I've always had kind of like an eye mm -hmm. for a hole, you know, just kind of seeing, man, that would be a good hole to play. And I always told my wife, I was like, you know, you're a disc golfer when you're driving down the interstate and he's like, oh, that'd be fun to throw a disc on. <laughs> it'd be a fun hole. So basically I come out and I will throw it, you know, five, six, seven times, whatever it depends. And so I feel like, oh, this is going to be a, a good hole. Um, and then I have to think, all right, well, is this going to be a fun hole just for me? Or is it going to be a fun hole for everybody? Um, so what I do is I try to take a hole. And if it's too easy for me, then I try to make it a little bit harder. Okay. Because that way it, 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 it has everybody. The pros alike will all enjoy it. So that's what I look at a lot is, a, is, it, is it not just a, if it, it could be a fun hole and challenging hole for every player. The, the recreational player all the way to the pro level player. So was the Leland Open back in 2019 your first event that you ran? Yes. Um, well, yes and no. Uh, it was my first real Kind of tournament i had run a few monthlies um prior to that it kind of like on sunday morning we do a what the church of the presbyterian which we've met out here every sunday morning and kind of i've kind of led that for the last three or four years and, and leland open's only been around for four years mm -hmm. this will be our fourth year and when people say this is their favorite tournament of the year and they come from goldsboro myrtle beach fayetteville jacksonville coming from all over the states you know all, you know north and south carolina it means a lot to me and it makes me want to go out and do it some more and it's just and it's fun for me to do it's a lot of work um but i enjoy it um i don't see it as work i see it as fun um and so it's my way of giving back to our local disc golf community it's just by holding events that not only are fun and challenging um but are you know you know payouts are great uh we have good good prizes to give out in player packs um, just have a good atmosphere where everybody can just meet together, have a great time. So I might be a little bit biased. Like I said, the Leland Open in 2019 was my first tournament. Okay. It's definitely one I look forward to every year. Right. Uh, I am definitely sad that this will be the last Leland Open here at Founders Park. I yeah. know you said the town was planning on doing something else with the property, so the disc golf course unfortunately has to be pulled. Yeah, the... Um town for the last few years have been planning to do a remodel of the park where they're going to be adding amphitheater splash pads new playgrounds uh, exercise stations um, and this is all going to start in january of fifth january 15th of this year um, so with all that being in there's no room for the disc golf course um, there's barely enough room for it as it is now yeah uh, with the walkers and the stuff that we have so we have been getting along with you know the park and everything since we opened up and haven't been any problems uh, but they feel like now that we have all that coming in that we, the, the disc golf park just can't be here which i agree and i and i i i um i accept all the new changes they're doing it's gonna be great for the community and um, i think it's gonna be great for the park and everything and it's a lot of good stuff for kids and, and adults alike um, so with that being said, you know, they, the course has been gone. So what are we going to do? Well, the town has purchased or has got acquired some land that's pretty much landlocked and you can't really do anything on it, which makes it prime location for a disc golf course. So it's 11 acres. Uh, we are going to have uh, Innova disc golf uh, designer, uh, Russell Schwartz. He's going to be designing it. He's designed hundreds of courses around the states and stuff. And, a lot of great courses so we're welcoming that we're in the design stage now where we're going to probably do a nine hole course but it's going to be a really well done nine hole course with par fours par fives and we're going to have multiple basket placements and multiple tee boxes okay and the tee boxes are a new item that um any of us come out with and we're going to be trying them out we said yeah hey let's do it let's put it in into the, the plan and Try those out and see what everybody likes about it so but they say they're great and they're very uh, maneuverable so you can if you if you find out for a few months that this is not working out you can just adjust it very easily that's that's awesome i hate i hate to see the course at founders park go but yeah. if what you're saying 
comes true, if it's going to be as good as where yeah, all yeah, it is, yeah. then this will this will be a, a great change. Yeah, it's 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 kind of uh, pulling my little emotional heartstring a little bit, you know, a little bit because this was my first design and uh, it's really got me on the map as a designer and locally, and it's actually given me more opportunity to design and and I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from it uh, for the course. And it's just going to be on, I think, September the 12th, uh, the town. We're going to be pulling up the baskets and the tea pads and the signs and all that. And well, I got a couple of uh, closing questions. Okay. And then, uh, so, first one. So, if someone wants to get into course design, mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give them? Or, like, what direction would you point them in to be able to start doing that? Okay. Well, first of all, you're going to have to have property. Um, whether it be private property, your own, or a municipality. Uh, if you see a park somewhere and you're like, man, that'd be a great place for a disc golf course. This is exactly what I did when I first started here at Founders. I was like, man, this is, you know, the, how, it got, how it got started was I was coming out with my kids and we would just pick targets like a tree or a trash can. We'd use that as our, our, our goals. And I was like, man, this would be a great little disc golf course. And so I just emailed the Parks and Rec Division and, uh, at the town and uh, said, hey, look, what do you think about putting the disc golf course in out the Founders Park? And they immediately, within a matter of minutes, emailed me back and said, well, we've talked to other disc golf people or in, you know, in, in the past, and, and we've had the idea, but we've always thought there's not enough room for that. And it said, if you have an idea, we'd love to hear it. And so I was like, well, I'm glad to come in and meet with you and talk to you about it. And uh, I was in there the next day in the conference oh, wow. room with um, Neil Brooks, who is now the assistant town manager, and Bill Nadu, his, who was our facilities, uh, facilities maintenance manager. And so we talked with them, and we, I worked with them, and we brought, we walked the court out here and what I was thinking, and, and they're like, yeah, let's do it. And so we, they graciously funded all the money for all the baskets and, and all the materials and stuff, and the club did some of the work, but the town did most of it. So there was a quick, pretty quick turnaround. There. there was a pretty quick turnaround. I think we started in August of 2017, and by June of 2018, the course was in. Okay. So it was real quick. It was, uh, which is, that's not normal. <laughs> uh, it can be normal, but it's, it's not very normal from what I've seen other courses and other municipalities doing. Uh, just working with BCC and with Southeastern Community College, I've it's been longer than that already just in the process of working it all out but so yeah so go talk to your public uh utility people your your town town managers your parks and rec people that's who i would talk with is that if you have some private land of your own hey you can do whatever you want to out there i like to do what's more of a natural design where i don't go out and i try to cut down trees to make a fairway look at the landscape and see what would be a fun and challenging hole uh, for you and if that's fun and challenging for you it's probably more than likely gonna be fun and challenging for others Okay, so yeah, so talk to your town people talk to uh, property owners There's um, there's people out there that have property uh, like a lot of um, farms um, That they have natural areas. They don't they don't grow. They don't harvest anything on them. It's just woods my next closing question is, uh, since you've now run four tournaments, or you've run three tournaments going into your fourth and fifth, right? Uh, if someone wanted to start their own event, either create it or mm -hmm. run it or help run it, like what advice or direction would you point them in? All right, um, come up with a good idea for it. Whether it be a fundraising tournament, whether it be a club tournament, um, whatever kind of tournament you want to run, First of all, get you some sponsors, get you some people that's gonna help you with, run the tournament. Talk to vendors, talk to local uh, stores like Keep Your Games, Play It Against Sports. Talk to uh, other players uh, and say, hey, I'm thinking about running a tournament. What do you think about it? You know, I think it'd be a great idea. Well, let's do it. And so uh, basically you just get those sponsors out. Uh, you can, you know, sponsor a hole is nothing. You can do anywhere from 25 to 100 bucks. You know, depending on what you want to raise the money for and most everybody is looking to do something for the community do your local stuff uh, community then you need to find yourself a, a course uh, whether it be one of the local courses you have uh, like here we have Castlehane, Arrowhead, 
uh, talk to their club officials, make sure they're not having any other tournaments, it's not going to uh, affect anything that they're doing. A lot, there's some people now who are doing like uh, just temporary courses. Like I've had ideas of going to the battleship in North Carolina and just say, "Hey, oh, that'd be fun. I want to have a tournament out here. Can I use your boat? Can I use? <laughs> can I use the surrounding areas to make baskets sit and have people throwing a plastic disc around? I think it would bring attention to them and bring a lot of attention to that area because it's like, man, disc golf on a battleship. Who's done that? Nobody's done that that I know of. Well, Darren, thank you so much for thank your you. time this morning. Thank uh, you. If you want to take this time to shout out any sponsors or websites or anything yeah, else. Yeah, definitely. To... Um, first of all, uh, Cape Fear Games. They've been sponsoring me for the last couple of years in my play and uh, supporting me in everything I do, whether I'm running tournaments, whether I'm playing tournaments, where I'm just whatever. They, uh, they're always 100%. They have the best selection in town. Uh, so go see John, go see Heath, all those guys over at Cape Fear Games. They're, they're the number one. Uh, also... Um, uh, I do have some uh, web slinging disc golf on YouTube. Um, it's my little so, my, my social media platform where I do some videos and stuff like that. So I, I haven't got on there a lot lately, but once this fall comes around and the tournaments are all done, then I'm going to be starting to do some more some more video production of myself and uh, get some stuff out there for some fun things, some some ideas. Uh, I've got like one where my wife's going to pick my my disc every shot. And, so if you want to follow uh, Leland Disc Golf Club, you can find out there. Uh, most of our tournaments and stuff. I throw a lot of our stuff on there. Also a Facebook page of Web Sling and Disc Golf is also on there so you can find some information about what's going on in my neck of the world. So, All right. Awesome. And by the time this video comes out, I think the registration will be closed already for the Dolphin Classic, but there yeah. will still be time for the Leland Open. So if you live in the area, I'll go ahead and leave a link for that as well as a link for all of uh, Darren's socials. Cool. Thank you. So, so if you guys enjoyed this interview and want me to interview more uh, local players, designers, uh, tournament directors, just hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment below, and as always, have a good one.